Aloha and welcome to Holistic Wellness Revealed. I'm Letitia Sharp and I'm your host today as we bring on the writer and performer of an original work called You Might Think Less of Me, Jenny Fox. Welcome, Jenny. Thank you. Thanks for having me. <laughs> of course. Uh, you know, I just want to start off by just getting real about something. Uh, Jenny, we haven't really talked a lot, like maybe a handful of times in the last five to 10 years. And um, I'm not even nervous about having you on the show or any questions. It's also natural to me because you're one of my dearest and closest friends from senior year in high school. And the connection that we have is beyond, it goes beyond any kind of separation of distance, of words, of anything. This is a connection also that we forged, for lack of better words, during, and maybe it was a, a forging of connections because it was during your senior year of high school. There's so much judgment and exploration and assumptions and so many things happening during that time in your life. And I was relocated and um, you were just this beacon of kindness and openness and um, having gained that, I'm starting to cry, having gained that kind of uh, friendship so early on, it was instrumental in my growth. So I am really grateful and very blessed to uh, have you today. I can't believe I'm tearing up. This is really special. Well, I feel the same way, Tish, and you came out of nowhere and, and were very nurturing to me at a, at a time uh, of life that I, I, deeply deeply benefited from that and so mm -hmm. I feel the same way about you especially at that phase of life that we connected for the first time so yeah yes and my so many of our young um females and males that are growing up in these times be able to have those kinds of connections that are lifelong over many lives, probably times, <laughs> many lifetimes of connections. <laughs> um, so um, sending that out there also as a, a prayer for all of our youth and adults, if they haven't had a chance to experience such a thing. So let's move right into when I heard what you were working on, I I was elated because this is a subject that's so near and dear to me because of a lot of our youth, but also because of my own journey. And you wrote and performed recently uh, in May a uh, work called You Might Think Less of Me. And the tagline right below that title is they judged her to pieces. She fought to be whole. And I just wanted to ask you a little bit. Can you give us a little information about your inspiration for this piece? Well, um, I found myself, um, you know, in my late 40s um, feeling disjointed and and disconnected um physically emotionally um um i could definitely draw a uh like a thread through the reasons why you know my history my, my journey through life different relationships and all of that but um it was really visceral and i had already done a lot of really like cognitive based work you know in counseling and and just within myself about what what that what had led me there but i had yet there he is there's the head there's my, <laughs> yep, right at the perfect time um but i'd yet to really uh explore on on a physical level um moving that energy through and so um, I felt ready to do that, um, but also scared to do that. And um, it was actually my my counselor who had suggested to me that maybe explore it through 
through performance, even if I didn't actually end up putting it in front of anybody. So I just sort of um, kind of got got creative like I would have when I was a little kid, you know, just kind of making up characters and um, different parts of my body and where do things live and where did I kind of internalize what message and started playing with it. And then um, just got more and more inspired and excited and uh, creative and um, just uh, let things flow and, and, and didn't hit an edit button, you know, at that point. <laughs> so. I love that. I like what you said about you explored in your body. Well, two things. First of all, you explored in your body where you were internalizing where these feelings lived that you wanted to move and that you wanted to release. And yeah. what can you talk a little bit about that? Like, what was that process like? Did you dance? I know you do yoga also. Yeah. So you're comfortable with your body and moving. And I'm sure that relationship is strong with yourself. So what, yeah, what did that look like? How did you find it? Like, where did it live? Yeah, um, well, it, it it looked a bunch of different ways. Um, <laughs> <laughs> rather than than um and and that exploration kind of varied depending on on what what body part I was kind of talking about so um I'll I'll be specific just to give an example so for example my belly right which shows the signs of motherhood which even before I was ever a mother um you know my one of my first intimate partners when I was a young person had um, s said to me that uh, my body would be perfect if it weren't for this and I actually grabbed a hold of my belly and this is actually uh, a, a moment in in the piece that is illuminated that I used. So I carried that literally from age 15 all the way through my entire life through motherhood get exacerbated by motherhood because then you know once we become mothers our bellies change and they show the the warrior stripes no matter how we give birth right um and uh so so i explored um both where does that messaging come from in in the world? So I did some kind of digging around with like YouTube videos and 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 who might you know who 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 might um, stand in opposition to acceptance of the belly, for example, and then kind of looked at characters who out in the world in the real world, and then started basing fusing my actual you know. Uh, intimate partner who had said this with somebody out in the world that exists that I don't even know just based on their <laughs> YouTube video and then just worked on fusing together and so then um sometimes so in the case of my belly it wasn't necessarily like movement like yoga or or dance or like belly dancing or anything like that it was manifesting this character becoming it and then in, in that sense, it's like an exorcism of that energy. So it wasn't uh, maybe as one might imagine, like somehow like I did some massage on my belly or, you know, and all of these things are incredibly powerful ways of healing energy around parts of the body. Absolutely. Um, but but for this project in particular, it it was more about like allowing almost, almost like as if it were the exorcism of a demon, right? Like mm -hmm. this is what that manifests as, and now I'm going to become that. And so I'm both expelling that energy from my body and being the thing that's harming me at the same time. And so it became creative and hopefully ultimately entertainment, right? Because it was it's something I put in front of people. But the the personal process began in in my mind. I even got a bunch of books from the library on exorcism. 
<laughs> and was studying, you know, how, what that looks like in the history of it, and 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 um, you know how many people believe it's it's you know fictionalized, and how many people believe it's real, and so there 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 energetically there was a lot of energy around that, like manifesting the the muck and then moving it out and through. Does that make sense? Right. No, that's fascinating. And and the cool thing about that too is that some of the some of the training that I've received also is about how to find love with those parts of ourselves that we want to ex have exercised, exorcisted. <laughs> so um and once you and you did that through play right you did that through creativity like through finding that inner child and getting a real sense and a knowing so basically you did have a consult with that part of yourself and you gave them a way to be able to be out and if they do come back in, you're super familiar, right? <laughs> like you're so familiar with that part of you that now it doesn't even reside in the same way inside of you. Yes, that is how it feels. So uh, it 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 is both, it, I, I, what you said resonated in that it is both a uh, an expelling of and also an embracing of right yeah, that's so beautiful yeah. yeah i love that i i love that a lot um so during this process what uh what kind of feedback did you get did you have to work through right i mean i'm sure not everybody was on board and i'm sure some people may have thought you were a little crazy how did you like how did you manage that because you were doing some really deep, very vulnerable work. So yeah. How did that? Well, I started by being very selective. <laughs> who who I shared with that I was working on this, and um, you know, my spouse and and life partner um, was the first to hear about it, other than my counselor, you know, um, and he was on board right away just like that sounds really interesting i cannot visualize what you're talking about but it sounds super interesting and go you know i think you should go for it um and then once i had a little bit more of of a sense it, although i didn't yet know what it would become just more of a sense of it i approached a director in town who i have admired for a long time Anne marie perath and she um, co-runs a local theater company and I've long admired her her work and uh, approached her and uh, had lunch and just told her I was working on this thing and and I wasn't exactly sure yet how it was going to end up but when I had something that felt at all cohesive would she be willing to be the first to put eyes on it in a in a theatrical sense. And uh, she said she would, and that it sounded really interesting to her thematically, even though, again, we, we weren't exactly sure what it would be. So, so, I mean, I was, I was not, you know, sharing very broadly that I, that I was working on something, um, you know, again, because it is per, a personal process mm -hmm. and, and, you don't ever know. I mean, I'm fortunate in that I I really don't have people that I'm close to in my life that that uh, wouldn't be supportive, you know. But but I I even even among those people, I you know I wasn't sort of talking broadly about it if that, if that makes sense. Yeah, and I think that brings up a really good point too because when we do have those parts of us that are vulnerable that we are working through that are sacred to us and yeah. feel tender i mean yeah. it's important it's a definite um it's a real thing people have to earn their place to be able to share certain parts of us you're not going to go into the coffee shop and be like oh my gosh this is the most amazing release i just exercised this part of me and then people would be like 
oh my gosh, like, who is that woman and TMI, right? So, and, and then you wouldn't be received. So I think that's also a really important message to get out to people that when you're going through these transformations and when you're going through these healings really is what it is. And these revelations of healing, you know, be selective. Yeah. Yeah. And, and again, not, not out of shame, you know, it's mm -hmm. it definitely, uh, it, it just, you know, it felt sacred. And, yeah. And, and I guess for me as well, and this, this is broader than just, you know, m my own, um, experience with, with the show, um, is, is how, how you know in in the age of of social media in particular you know how 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 much sharing really is helpful and what is real sharing and you know um i don't you know i i think everyone has to answer that for themselves and i know i know for me um you know it's again not out of shame or like there are things that one should hide but for for me it feels more supportive to have like I'm going to sit down and have coffee with a specific uh friend and say hey I'm going through this thing and I want you to know that and then have that you know in person yeah. actual, and and doing that with one individual feels you know more supportive for me than than going larger or or quantity yeah. or yeah and yeah. even checking in with yourself of who's that individual you know yeah. and have you established that kind of true authentic connection right and um and then you let the your final masterpiece mm -hmm. i say final but it's really always a work in progress right <laughs> uh then you let that speak and people can either take that or leave that and it's on them right it's just right. something that you created and shared yeah and and i think too like the folks that gravitated towards seeing the the piece for example um it, it was interesting because um, with the exception of those that felt obligated to go, you know, like people that I was really close to, <laughs> the exception of them, you know, they're trapped into going. But um, for for those that that came about it more randomly, it, it was interesting just to see, even on an energetic level, like what who who's sort of drawn to the fire, if you will. Right. right? Yeah. That particular bonfire is mm -hmm. like warm their hands and. Um, and that was, that was a beautiful part of the process too, was, was that sharing, you know, so. Right. And to see that unfolding and, and just even the ahas and the moments of magic that come across people's faces and that sort of wash over their whole being, you can see an energetic wash when that happens. Yeah. And I love, I love seeing that. Yeah. It's a beautiful yeah. thing to witness. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think that one of the other things I want to touch on with you is you said the stories and um, there's a lot of talk and all of the circles of healing about our stories and really, um, you know, this, this story of your 15 year old self that you were perfect except for, you know, mm -hmm. and then how impressionable that is for us at mm -hmm. certain times in our lives. I was told I, I couldn't sing and I definitely should not do that in front of anybody else. And, um, just this morning I had my Japanese exchange students telling me what an amazing, beautiful voice I had. And I just giggle, you know, I'm like, <laughs> You only do, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, those stories, I think, can you speak a little into that? Because that feels really like a, a great message to be able to share. Yeah. For, for me personally, um, the intellectual knowing that certain stories uh, are, are false or were false 
uh, came before the visceral knowing, and I'm still on the journey of the visceral knowing. Right. Um, I absolutely understand intellectually and through words and language and rationally why, you know, certain um, stories that I've told myself that we tell ourselves, all of us, right? Um, like you highlighted, you know, uh, I, I'd be perfect if it weren't for, you know, I think we can all relate pretty well to that story. Mm -hmm. uh, so of it. Um, and, and I think most of us, when we highlight it, we can, we can pretty easily identify that it's false, you know, well, I get that it's false, I get it. But uh, to, to really feel it, you know, in, in in one's body for for me for example to to not have my my stomach go into knots you know if if in an you know m maybe my intimate partner is going to caress my abdomen and to not ooh, they're gonna find out that there's something wrong with me right like that's visceral that's in the body that's trauma that's trauma right because it you know, and this is again just one example that 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 I'm sharing. Um, but I think for me, it's an ongoing process of yeah, you know, um, for, of, for all of us, for all of us, yeah, of of the difference between I get it, I know it, I understand it, I really do, you know, um, and then to integrate that, or 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 even not necessarily integrate, but just to maybe approach it differently and i think that's where i'm at with it is is that that for so much of my life i really believed that if i could just get it down up here you know mm -hmm. and, and get it, that things would shift and yeah. um and and that has not been my personal journey you know mm -hmm. but, um yeah and so many people do it. I think that's a really great point too, is because so many people want to understand. They're trying to understand, they're trying to learn, they're doing the books, they're doing the workshops, they're doing the retreats, they're doing all the things except for, and what it really comes down to, right, is how we judge ourselves. Because yeah. that's what happens. Maybe it's something that somebody said and they may have just said it on the fly, like they didn't really mean it. First of all, there is no such thing as perfection. Okay, and second of all, right, <laughs> That, I mean, yeah. let's just go there. But second of all, then we grab onto it, right? Yeah. And we hold it and we believe it. Mm -hmm. And then we start judging ourselves, you mm -hmm. know? And that's, I think that's where coming in with all of those stories that we talked, all that self-talk that yeah. we have. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so being able to get that self-talk out into a creative expression was great. I so wish that I could say, are you going to do it again? Are you going to do more performances? Oh, uh, we are going to do more with it. I, we don't have anything scheduled just yet. So I'm not sure when, where, how, but we're in the process of figuring that out. I would love it if we could just bring up your website. Um, you might think less of me.org. If anyone is interested in finding out more about this, and I want to just touch base with in that picture, if you can see people, it looks like she's wearing a bathing suit. That's not a bathing suit. Those are the parts of her that have been removed and they're on the ground beside her. And this is really. Um, they're separate from her. I want to make sure to uh, give credit. The credit is on that image, but I want to make sure to say it out loud to the visual artist, Rauf Hagigi, who uh, did that drawing um, and who generously uh, gave me permission to use his image in association with the show. So it's this... beautiful and it says so much. I mm -hmm. mean, you don't. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, there are parts that were basically dissected through mm -hmm. experiences of life that were perpetuated through our thoughts, right? Yeah. And yeah. through our stories and our own judgments. 
So, um, yeah, I just, I can't wait to see more of this and I can't wait to see the movement that this original work of yours, um, generates in uh, adults and in young people and, and men and women and everyone, because we all have that healing to be able to do. And, uh, I just, like I said, I was ecstatic when I heard that you were doing this work and making it available. Like it's available and it feels friendly. You know, it doesn't feel so scary. And from what I hear, it's, it's funny too. Is it your show? Pretty, there's parts that are pretty funny, right? It is satirical for sure. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. There's some parts that, that, uh, that folks, folks laugh quite a bit so and that's enjoyable yeah so I love yeah. That. definitely hope it it uh it benefits others and that people find it both entertaining and supportive so yeah <laughs> well i cannot wait until you and i can sit down and have a cup of coffee <laughs> and Thank you. <laughs> Talk and just connect again on that physical level without distance. And at the same time, I feel that deep uh, sacred connection with you now and always actually. And I, and just thank you so much for this contribution to healing of the world and putting out there things on, um, because I saw this through your social media. And even if you wouldn't have invited me personally, uh, that may have been my only way to be able to see it. So these are the things that we do want to perpetuate and use yeah. social media for so that we can continue to spread the good word of healing and journey and um, yeah, support. Indeed. Well, thank you so much, Tish. Thank you. And I look forward to when I can give you a big hug in person. Yes. So, um, yes, enjoy this beautiful day. And thanks again for your contribution and sharing. And um, I can't wait to see more of this. And I really hope that you do another performance or maybe put it out in some kind of like have video clips or do something so that it can get out there bigger. Thank you. Thanks, Tish. I appreciate it. <laughs> Mahalo. <laughs> and um, to all of our sponsors and our donors uh, and to Think Tech, thank you so much for giving us a platform and supporting us to be able to have these important conversations, these conversations that bring light to healing and to help us reveal those parts of ourselves that may need a little extra care. Mahalo. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.